films are made up of sequences. Sequences are made up of scenes. And scenes are made up of shots. That's a kill. In previous episodes, we covered camera movement, editing techniques, Tell me. and composition. Today, we'll focus on lighting fundamentals, from different types and qualities of light to essential lighting terms and gear. And then there was light. This is episode 12 of The Shot List. Cinematic Lighting, part one. Hit subscribe and enable notifications to get all future episodes of The Shot List. At the end of the video, we'll explain how you can download your own cheat sheet for everything we're about to cover. Let there be light. Ah, my eyes! Lighting is one of the most important elements of filmmaking. More than just illumination, lighting itself plays a massive role in visual storytelling. Lighting can help determine the mood of your scene, provide insight into a character, and guide a viewer's eye. On set, these decisions are made primarily by the director of photography and the gaffer, who is the head lighting electrician on the crew. Once a lighting plan has been decided by the DP, the gaffer executes it by obtaining the necessary lights and gear and overseeing the setups. In part one of this video, we'll cover the lighting fundamentals. In part two, we'll dive into how to light subjects and their surroundings. Before you begin setting up lights, it's important to understand the different forms light comes in. Explain it all to me now. All light can be split into two categories, natural and artificial. Natural light is any light that occurs naturally, like sunlight, moonlight, and firelight. Artificial light is everything else, man-made light powered by electricity. From there, we can branch out into additional categories. Ambient lighting refers to any lights that are on location which the crew didn't bring. This includes street lamps, neon signs, or the moon. Practical lighting refers to any light source that can be seen in the frame, whether it be ambient or placed there by a gaffer. Motivated lighting means that there is a logical or reasonable justification for the light in a scene. Often, practical lights exist simply to justify or motivate the light. To be able to work with light, Cinematographers also need to understand its properties. For example, how does one measure light? Lumens is a measurement of how much light a source produces. Lux, or foot candles, measures how much of that light hits the subject, otherwise known as incidental light. Reflective light is the amount of light that reaches the camera. The amount of light is dependent on both the strength of the source and its position in relation to the subject. As soon as light leaves the source, it begins to lose intensity. This is called light falloff, and we can predict and account for this loss using an equation called the inverse square law. The intensity of light is equal to one over the distance squared. Basically, this means that every time you double the distance away from the source, the light is reduced by 75%. Another aspect of light that cinematographers measure is the color temperature, which is measured in thermodynamic units called kelvins. Daylight is bluer than most artificial lights at about 5600 kelvin. Daylight can also be imitated by artificial light sources with the same temperature. Tungsten lights are a common artificial source with a color temperature of about 3200 kelvin, though this can vary based on the source. Mixing these two light sources, therefore, can add a variety of color to your shot, with tungsten lights adding orange and daylight adding blue. For a thorough explanation on color temperature, check out our video linked below. Once you understand your light sources, you'll need to know some basic concepts and terminology. To the uninitiated, 
hearing cinematographers talk about lighting can sound like a foreign language. <laughs> Let's look at some of the most commonly used terms on set. Exposure is the amount of light that reaches the sensor or film stock. In previous videos, we explained the mechanisms that determine the exposure, the aperture, shutter speed, and ISO. The aperture is an adjustable mechanism that determines how much light enters the lens, and the various sizes are measured in f-stops. Each f-stop either doubles the amount of light or reduces it by half. T-stops are another common setting in cinema lenses to measure exactly how much light actually hits the sensor. All cinematography is a balance between light and shadow, and one of the ways this relationship is expressed is called the contrast ratio. This is a shorthand for how we measure the difference between light and shadow in two areas of an image, usually between the two sides of a subject's face, or between the subject and the background. High key lighting is a term that expresses a low contrast ratio, where the background and the subject are lit evenly with minimal contrast. Low key lighting, on the other hand, uses a high contrast ratio where the difference between light and shadow is much larger with maximum contrast. Both high and low key lighting are used in a variety of genres to evoke specific moods and atmospheres. Overall, high key lighting is used for brighter, happier scenes. While low key lighting is often used for darker, dramatic scenes. You're sheltering enemies of the state, are you not? Chiaroscuro is a type of low key lighting with a high contrast ratio. This is seen most frequently in film noirs to enhance the subgenre's mysterious and dangerous qualities. Check out our video on Chiaroscuro to learn more. A cinematographer must also choose between hard light and soft light. Hard light is more directional light that creates stark shadows, which works best in more dramatic or intense scenes. Soft light is more diffused and generates less defined shadows. This type of lighting is often used for happier or romantic scenes. Some of the best naturally occurring soft light comes during magic hour or golden hour. This occurs twice a day, just before sunset and just after sunrise, when the sunlight is less harsh and more colorful. Lighting placement in relation to the camera should also be considered. The dumb side, also called the broad side, is lighting the side of a subject which is closer to the camera, often giving the subject a more approachable feeling. The smart side, also called the short side, refers to lighting the side of a subject that is not facing the camera, giving the subject a more dramatic look. Lens flares are created when light hits the lens, the shapes and colors of which differ depending on the lens. For me, it literally is just this aesthetic thing that I like, which I absolutely am guilty of overusing and realize that it can be insanely distracting. But I do love the look of it, and it's just this incredible look that for some moments feel appropriate. Bokeh are out of focus elements in a shot, typically points of light that often add a romantic or painterly texture to the image. Now that we've got these key terms and concepts under our belts, let's look at the gear necessary to achieve them. Yes, yeah, real fine, expensive gear you've brought out here, Mr. Hooper. A professional film set often has an expansive variety of lighting equipment, but there's some gear which you're almost certain to see on any set. Lights themselves come in a variety of forms. There are tungsten lights, which are powerful and have a warm color temperature. Daylight is usually achieved with HMI lights, which are even stronger but have a cooler temperature. Fluorescent lights, which offer soft, cool light. Kino flows, which are banks of tube lights adjustable to various temperatures. And LED lights, which provide a high amount of control over color and strength. For more control of a light's color, 
Gaffers will often use gels, thin plastic sheets which come in an assortment of colors. Used in concert with a light's color temperature, gels help cinematographers achieve their desired hues. A light meter is used to measure the amount of incidental lighting hitting a subject, which then informs the exposure settings on the camera. Some models also include a spot meter, which allows you to pinpoint an exact part of the image for exposure. Many cameras themselves also have different modes to measure the reflective light actually reaching the lens. Other ways to measure lighting ratios include waveforms, histograms, and false color, which we'll cover in a future video. Once you've made the choice to use soft light in a scene, there are many ways to create the necessary diffusion. Diffusion is when a semi-translucent material is placed between the light source and the subject. This scatters the light, making it softer, and there are a few methods used to do this. Soft boxes use translucent cloths placed in front of a light. Diffusion paper can achieve a similar effect. Silks are often used for larger sources. Of course, there are also natural diffusers like clouds, fog, dust or smoke. Bouncing the light with reflectors creates diffusion while also redirecting light. Reflectors come in a variety of colors and textures, each bringing a unique type of diffusion. Bead boards are styrofoam boards with imperfect surfaces that scatter light differently than a piece of foam core which bounces light more evenly. Another way to mitigate the intensity of the light is with neutral density gels. These can be attached to the light or applied to windows to reduce the sunlight. Flags are opaque boards that shape and block unwanted light. Barn doors are adjustable flaps on the light itself, which have a similar function. Egg crates direct light and help prevent it from spilling into unwanted areas. Cookies add texture to a light. Short for the term cuculoris, cookies are boards with patterns cut into them that create a dappled effect when placed in front of a light. Mounting and positioning lights on set can be done with light stands or with C-stands, which are also useful for setting up diffusion, flags and reflectors. Just about anything needed to complete the desired setup. Believe it or not, we've just scratched the surface on cinematic lighting. This is only the beginning. There are more terms, gear and concepts out there, with more arriving every day. In the next episode, we'll take everything we learned here and apply it to real-life lighting scenarios, including how to light a subject versus how to light the background, with actual lighting setups from the best cinematographers working today. In the description, you'll find a link to the Studio Binder blog where you can download a PDF cheat sheet with everything we've covered in this video and more. That's all for now. We hope we've illuminated these lighting fundamentals properly. Stay tuned for part two. We'll see you there.